The second property that we're going to use in order to solve linear equations or in equations in general is the multiplication property of equality. In order to complete this section, you need to know how to multiply and divide integers and fractions and understand the concept of a multiplicative inverse. Upon completing this presentation, you will be able to solve basic equations using multiplication and division. So similarly to the addition property of equality, we have the multiplication property of equality. The multiplication property says if A equals B, then you can multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, or you can divide both sides of the equation by the same number. We do have one little caveat to this. C cannot equal zero. That has nothing to do with solving equations. It has to do with, more generally, you're not allowed to divide by zero. So, our procedure in order to solve these equations, we want to divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient. Alternatively, you can multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient. This alternative method, we will use it if we are dealing with fractions. Note, when moving things to the other side, you always have to do the opposite. Addition and subtraction are opposites. Multiplication and division are opposites. When we use the multiplication property, make sure that you do not change the sign when you move to the other side of the equation. That is special to addition and subtraction. Again, we have the same rule as before. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So let's look at some examples. If we look at example A, we have 6 times a number is equal to 30. You can probably do this in your head and get that x is equal to 5. But now how do we get from 6x equals 30 to x equals 5? How do we get from 6 times a number to just the number, getting rid of 6 times? And how do we get from 30 to 5? In order to do this, what we need to do is divide both sides by 6. If we divide the left side by 6, my 6's cancel, leaving me with just x. And on the right side, we get 30 divided by 6 is 5. And so that's going to be our basic approach to solving these problems. So let's look at some more examples and see what we can do. If we look at example B, we have negative 7y equals 56. May take a little bit of, a little bit more time to come up with your answer just because we are dealing with negatives. So let's go ahead and use our solving techniques. So the first thing I want to do is, again, we have negative 7 times a number. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I want to divide both sides, not just by 7, but by negative 7. We want to get rid of the whole thing. I want to know what is y equal to, not what minus y is equal to. So we need to not only get rid of the 7, but we need to get rid of the negative as well. If we divide both sides by negative 7, on the left side, my 7s, my negative 7s cancel, leaving me with just y. And on the right side, we get 56 divided by negative 7 is negative 8. A positive divided by a negative is negative. And we're done. Now, if we look at example C, C we have minus x equals 4. Now, do you remember what it means if there is no number there? Remember that if there is no number there, it is implied to be a minus 1. So in order to get x by itself, 
I want to divide both sides by negative 1, giving me x equals negative 4. And that's it. Similarly, on d, remember that since it's a minus, it's technically a minus 1 times x. We can divide by negative 1, and we get x equals positive 7. So these are some basic ones involving integers. Now let's go over and look at some that involve fractions. And the first one's pretty easy. On example E, don't think of this as being a fraction, but think of this as being a division problem. We have x divided by 5 is equal to 9. What is the opposite of dividing? Well, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So in order to get rid of dividing by 5, I want to multiply both sides by 5. On the left side, my 5's cancel, leaving me with just x. And on the right side, you get 9 times 5 is 45. Okay, so now let's look at example f. Example f, I'm going to show you two ways that you can do this. The first one is going to be using techniques that we've kind of already looked at. Here we have a coefficient of 3 fourths. So if we do what we were doing before, the first thing I want to do is divide both sides by 3 fourths. But now you do need to remember the rules for dividing fractions. So I know that 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths is they cancel, leaving me with y. Now on the other side of the equation, in order to divide by 3 fourths, I want to multiply by the reciprocal. Try not to convert to decimals as we will want our answers in exact form, and if you convert to decimal, that's not necessarily going to happen. Okay, so now we have 12 over 1 times 4 over 3. Copy dot flip. So from here, we can go ahead and cancel common factors. We have 12 and 3 are both divisible by 3, giving us 1 and 4. From there, we can go ahead and multiply straight across, giving us y equals 4 times 4 is 16. Over 1 is, well, just 16. So this is the first thing that you can do when we talk about solving equations involving fractions. And it's a perfectly acceptable method, but it does kind of make it look a little weird. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is, instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So if we have 3 over 4, y equals 12. As I said, instead of dividing by 3 fourths, I'm going to go ahead and just multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. It kind of eliminates one step it also makes it look just a little bit nicer. So the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. I want to multiply both sides of the equation by 4 thirds. On the left side, we get the 4's cancel, the 3's cancel, leaving me with just y. On the right side, we still have the same thing as we had before. I'm going to cancel 12 and 3. We get 1 and 4, and then I can multiply across, giving me 16. So it's just a matter of which one makes more sense to you in terms of solving. Either one is acceptable. So let's look at our final example. We have 9 equals negative 3 fifths x. Again, for me, I prefer multiplying by the reciprocal. 
So I'm going to multiply by negative 5 over 3. I'm going to rewrite this just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. So in order to multiply, I want to flip the fraction in front of the x. Remember that we're isolating x. If I do that, I get negative 5 over 3 or 5 over negative 3. It doesn't matter where the negative goes. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. From here, we want to go ahead and cancel. On the right side, my 3's cancel, my 5's cancel, my negatives cancel. I am left with just x. On the left side, my 3 and my 9 cancel. And I have 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Over 1 we can leave it as just negative 15. So that takes care of our multiplication property. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense and hopefully you can see why we call it the multiplication property even though the majority of the time we are dividing. But remember that multiplication and division are basically the same operation. Let's look at one more example. This is an application problem. So we have, there is a relationship between the number of words in a child's vocabulary, V, and the child's age, A, in months. For ages between 15 and 50 months, inclusive. This relationship can be modeled by the formula V plus 900 equals 60A. We want to use the formula to find the number of words in a child's vocabulary at the age of 30 months. So real fast, um, notice here that we don't have X's, we have V's and A's. When you start talking application problems, it's always a good idea to kind of use letters to kind of indicate what is it that that letter represents. The other thing I want to point out on this problem is the word inclusive. What does this mean? Well, inclusive, all it means is that not only is it going to be the ages between 15 and 50, but it also includes 15 and 50. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we can do here. It says use the formula to find the number of words in a child's vocabulary at the age of 30 months. So 30 is this going to be a V or an A? Hopefully, you recognize that it's an A. It is an age, and so we want to replace A with 30. If we do that, we get V plus 900 equals 60 times 30. So from here, we want to go ahead and solve for V. What is the first thing that we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is simplify the right side of the equation. I want to multiply 60 times 30. If we multiply 60 times 30, we get 1,800. From here, we want to solve for V. So if I want to get V by myself or by itself, what do I need to do in order to get rid of the 900? Well, since this is plus 900, the opposite of plus 900 is minus 900. So I want to subtract 900 from both sides giving me V equals 900. Finally, since this is an application problem, I want to include correct units. 
So what are the correct units for this problem? Well, this is V, this is the vocabulary. And so this is the number of words in the child's vocabulary. So we're going to go ahead and just include our units, 900 words. And we're done. If you think about it, at the age of 30 months, we're talking about a child who is about a year and a half year old. Um, they have about 900 words in the vocabulary. Hopefully, most of them do not come from words that they learned from their father. I don't know about you, but my father taught me some very creative words that my mother wished I had never heard. Okay, but I digress. So the multiplication property of equality, when will we see this again? Solving equations is a fundamental concept in algebra. We will be extending these concepts in the next section when we look at solving equations in general. We will expand these concepts when we talk about solving linear equations in two variables, linear inequalities, systems of equations, quadratic equations, rational equations, and radical equations. So as you can see, these topics, these basic ideas, will come up throughout the course of the semester. Once you feel comfortable with the material in this presentation, go ahead and try the following problems on your own, bring to class, along with any questions that you might have.